Aloha, everyone. Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com. We had follow through to that week overall action. The session before in the market told you yesterday that, you know, things didn't look too good. My scans were kind of dull. One of the lamest, actually the lamest scanning session of 2018. And that includes all this time right here. But by lame, I just mean by boring overall up or down. It was just pretty bad. So it's no surprising that we followed through with some selling today. But if you look at the NASDAQ, what was heavier today? Volume. Great. New York Stock Exchange, what was heavier today? Volume. But the slightly good news, volume is below average on both of those exchanges. So it's not like a flood of institutional selling hit the market. Now, if you look at the SPY, you can see volume was above average, but that 50-day volume average line has been trending lower. So it's not dire just yet, but you know, I don't like to see that. DIA, same similar situation as the SPY, the QQQ, heavier volume, but at least it's below average. Still a lot of underneath support levels. I can start to extend these lines out here a little bit more. So there you go. So you got that support level, the 5,200 day moving average to work with. Um, most troubling probably the IWM. Once again, hitting those old recent highs last time it kind of broke out to new highs you can see that we sold off on heavy distribution we v ramped another stupid v move in the market on lower volume and here we are selling off again on a higher volume that being said though intraday let me go pull up let's bring this over here here are the cells the orders that went off as you can see all three limits filled this morning and then as we went on you'll see egan two profit stops home profit stop profit stop profit stop then finally sell stop sell stop for tiny losses but if you get rid of home and get rid of egan you know, only a few stops, only a few stocks triggered stops. And as you can see on all these, this one was for a regular size loss. The rest of them, um, this one, tiny, tiny gains, gains. Like I said, with home, that's the loss, gains, gains. That's another tiny, tiny, tiny loss. No big deal. Um, tiny, tiny loss. I do believe on this position. I forgot to check, but I'm 100% sure that that was a tiny loss. Gains, gains. Tiny loss, gains, gains. So everything here, including Egan and Home, majority gains, very few sell stops for losses, all tiny except for the one gen fail on my end, which was a 100% end of day full sell signal two sessions ago. So overall, very, very orderly. And if you then look even further, we only had, I only had one 100% sell signal that was in a speculative stock that I'm already out of. And then 50% sell signals, we can go through them all. As you saw, home, that big interest rate collapses wide, but closing below the 20 day moving average on above average volume with the red bop. Um, me, personally, I'm going to go ahead and give the stock more room to work because I've been irrational with stocks that don't have big losses and I've, you know, paid for it. I mean, let's just look at some of the stocks. Let's just look at one stock that setting new highs that I'm no longer a part of because I decided once again, be too cute with my stops, move my final sell stop right here, undercut it that day. Since that undercut, that damn stock has moved straight higher. I didn't need to do that. There was still another lower level to work with as a final stop level, but my irrational raising of stops caused me to get out of this one. So I don't want to do that on home. So instead, 50% of what I have left goes right here. I believe then I have a quarter here and my final quarter is right there or the 200 do moving average because they're kind of just like, you know, inches apart, basically. So a quarter there, a quarter there, and a half there on home. Um, MACQW, I'm going to have basically 25% there, 25% there. So 50% because it's closing below 20-day moving average on above average volume in red bop will be right there. And then I have multiple stops of like 100 shares each here, 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 all over the place on MACW. SRI closing below the 20 day moving average on above average volume. So even though everything looks fine, it's technically a 50% sell signal. But what I might do, I can't, I'm, I'm wrong. I can't, there's just too much room to these lows here, but you know, I don't know. I, um, I may or may not put half here. I'm thinking more than likely what I'll probably end up doing is doing 25% here, 25% there 
on this 50% end of day sell signal on my end. But if you're using it on an end of day basis, you sell 50% at the market in the morning tomorrow on Thursday. And then BSTI, I'm um, closing below this support low right here on heavier volume. So that's a 50% sell signal. CLXT closing below the recent lows and 50 day moving average on above average volume in red bot. That's a 50% sell signal. So I'm going to have half here and I'm still going to try to give it room to work. Um, a quarter here and a quarter there on CLXT for now. And then MOV closing below this recent lows. And it's 20-day moving average on above average volume in red bop. So 50% goes here. I have a stop here. And then my final stop on MOV is the gap fill. Um, just because I, I don't want to give it all the way back here to work. I think that 200-day moving average, unless it crashes, should be able to catch up to that line before it comes into play. But those are the end-of-day sell signals. Now getting back to the overall market really quick, I wanted to show really 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 quick let me expand this out a little bit more and open it up i wanted to show you that the new york stock exchange advanced decline line has started to roll over slightly but it's above this pivot level right here i wish i could draw a crosshair on here but i can't but you'll see that hopefully former resistance will now be become new support We'll see if that takes place. And the other slightly good news, if you're bullish and if you look at how few intraday stops I had compared to the losses today in the market, how few end-of-day sell signals with 0%, 100% sell signals for quality names, you'll then see with the put-call ratio jumping up to 1.03. The crowd is actually kind of bearish here, short-term and a little fearful. So that could be good news for all my long positions and for our new long positions for Thursday. So surprisingly enough, as I showed you, a lot of intraday stops, but a lot of those were, all, besides Jen, they were all partial profits or partial sell stops, which means I only raised so much capital. I haven't gotten filled in my ORN, VSTM, TTI, or MCF orders either. So I, with that all that capital available, I have to cancel all of my outstanding limit orders in MCF, TTI, VSTM, and ORN, and then use that capital along with the rest of the capital just to be able to put slightly under, not slightly, but a lot under 1% in each of the new long positions. I have six quality long positions, one new speculative um, position, and really quick, I can't do anything more than $3,000 in each of these new long signals we're going to go over. They're all at least, well, TNDM is extended, so it normally would be 1.5%, but since it's extended, 0.5%. But the bottom line is, is I can't even put 0.75% into all of these positions. Um, TNDM is supposed to be 0.75%. And then the biggest is PAR at 2% because it made two of the BOP scans, long being perfect speculator. But everything else, CGC, LE, SHAC, and the FCC ad are 1%. 1% 1 of my account capital and the account that I use for this methodology is $5,000. The most I can do is $3,000. And then with my speculative long position, I'll still be able to put $1,250 into it because I still want to get a full size in that because it doesn't make sense for me to go under $1,000 for any new long position, period, um, with the account capital that I have. So let's get back to the new long signals. We'll start off with CGC. So now you all know it's 1%. Basically, each and all of these, PAR should be 2, TNDM is 0.75%. So with that in mind, we're going to just going to run through them. You can look at the new positions page for, you know, you know, the details if you miss out on it here. But CGC, limit order 2987. Because they can't get full positions, I'm willing to give these stocks a lot of room to work because, remember, if they don't move higher immediately, I don't wait around and hope that it comes back. I'm immediately raising stops and getting out. So CGC, 2987. First cut loss, 2826. Second cut loss, 27.24. Third cut loss, 26, 20, 26, 26.69. Final cut loss right here, 25.62. LE, LE, getting along, limit order, 27.10. First cut loss, 25.80. Then, oh, excuse me, 25.80, 25.40, 23.65, 25.50, 25.60. Then there's Shack, Shake Shack. Love this thing. Love this stock. Love, love cheeseburgers. Love hamburgers. 
Limit order, 64.23. First cut loss, 61.20. 5864. I want to make sure I'm in the right spot. 5864, that is correct. 5625, 5465, 5286. So five stops. But remember, if this stop goes, chances are these stops will never come into play. So keep that in mind. PAR should be 2%, but obviously I can't do that. Limit order 1629. First cut loss, 1559. Second cut loss, 1489. Third cut loss, 1445. Final cut loss, 1399. FCCY ad, can slim quality. Limit order, 2180. Only two cut losses, pretty clear cut. 21, 2050. And then the last one, TNDM, perfect speculator quality stock. Extremely high beta stock. Very, very, very risky, even to the very first stop level. So not to the very first stop level, but to the very second, third, and fourth one. So keep that in mind. TNDM, limit order, 24.32, the close, because it's extended from the 20-day moving average. That's why it's only 0.75% signal. First cut loss level, 22.23. Second cut loss level, 20.07. Third cut loss level, all the way down here now, 17.49. Or you can use these lows if you decide to do what I'm doing. I don't recommend that. And then final cut loss level for me, 15.49. If you decide to take TNDM, no matter what, that should be your final cut loss level. If you take Shaq, I want that to be your final cut loss level. If you take LE, I want that to be your final cut loss level. If you take PAR, I want uh, that to be your final cut loss level. If you take CGC, I want that to be your final cut loss level. And if you take FCCY, you can use the stops that I am using. All right, everyone, I'm going to wrap it up there, here, <laughs> whatever. All right, I will see you in the chat room on Thursday. Aloha.